Ben Rolls will make his NASCAR Cup Series debut at Sonoma. NASCAR has updated their COVID-19 protocols in regards to racetracks, and Phoenix National Speedway will host a championship weekend once again this year. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about quite a few stories here on the channel. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. We're going to start off with the paint schemes and sponsorship news. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into that very, very quickly. The first paint scheme we're going to take a look at is Eric Amaral's 2021 Farmer John scheme that we're going to see this weekend at Sonoma Raceway. Eric Amaral's had some pretty good schemes here and also some not-so-great schemes. I, though, really do like this paint scheme a lot. The colors look very, very, very well. You also get some of the Smithville burning on the car as well. It looks really, really, really sick. They did a great job on this paint scheme. I'm definitely looking forward to see this paint scheme out on the racetrack this weekend at Sonoma Raceway. The next paint scheme we're going to take a look at is AJ Allmendinger's 2020 Ramco scheme that we're going to see at Mid-Ohio and I believe at Texas Motor Speedway as well, if I'm not mistaken. Paint scheme is very, very solid as well. I like the colors a lot. I like the red and the white on the car. I think they did a very good job on this paint scheme. I'm definitely looking forward to see this one out on the racetrack in this next couple weeks here in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. The next paint scheme we're going to take a look at is Andy Law's 2020 UCU Energy Air Incorporated scheme that we're going to see this weekend at Mid Ohio. I think this scheme is pretty solid, to be honest with you. It's not my favorite scheme that's come out this year, but it's really awesome to see that Andy Law has got some sponsors that's going to be working with them. I do like this paint scheme. It's really, really cool to see that Andy Law has a new paint scheme coming on board with them this weekend at Mid Ohio. The next paint scheme we're going to take a look at is Michael Ness 2020 Pilot Summer is a Go scheme that we're going to see this weekend at Mid Ohio. This paint scheme was teased a couple weeks ago um, on Reddit, if I'm not mistaken. I really like this paint scheme a lot. You get the black number, of course, that Michael Knight normally drives, but you also do get like a lot of the blue on the car, and I think it's a very solid scheme and you get kind of those summer colors and feel as well. I think this is a very good paint scheme. They did a very good job on it, and I'm definitely looking forward to see this one on the racetrack here this weekend at Mid-Ohio. And the final paint scheme we're going to go ahead and take a look at is Ricky Sinaus Jr.'s 2020 on Sunny D scheme that we're going to see this weekend at Sonoma Raceway. Sunny D is back. This is by far my favorite JG Doherty paint scheme that I have seen so far this year, and it's not even close. This paint scheme is absolutely incredible. I've been a huge fan of the Sunny D cars. They're just colorful. They pop. They do a really good job at doing that. And this paint scheme looks super, super, super good. They did a very awesome job on it. I really like the colors of this scheme a lot. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this one out on the racetrack this weekend at Sonoma. Hopefully they bring the scheme out quite a bit more. But for sure, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this one out on the racetrack here at Sonoma Raceway. And now we're going to go ahead and jump onto all the other major stories we discussed here on today's episode. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. We're going to start off with Kyle Larson. As Kyle Larson last night won the World of Allies race at Berg Raceway, picking up his 21st crew World of Allies win. What Kyle Larson's been doing this year, especially in NASCAR and dirt, has been absolutely incredible to watch. Not only does he win the Coco 600, the longest night, and dominate that race, but the next night he goes out there and wins the World of Outlaws race. It's just absolutely incredible to see what Kyle Larson is doing right now. He's been putting up incredible performance. He's doing a great job this year, and I think Kyle Larson will continue great things. He's definitely a championship favorite to win the championship this year in the Cup Series, and once again, winning the World of Outlaws race. That's absolutely incredible to see, and it's great to see that he won the World of Outlaws race last night. And now we're going to jump on to the next story of today's episode, as we're going to talk about Michael McDowell. As Michael McDowell in an interview says that he wants to return to Front Row Motorsports in 2022. He says, I'm planning to be at Front Row as long as they'll have me. I enjoy what we're doing. It's fun to be a part of something and build something. I have a tremendous amount of freedom at Front Row to be a part of this thing's and more of the inner workings at Front Row Motorsports. Michael McDowell's had a career so far at Front Row Motorsports, winning the Daytona 500. He's basically been sitting in the top 20 points all year. I thought by now he'd fall outside the top 20 points considering he, considering he does have the win. But Michael McDowell's been absolutely incredible to watch this year. You watch his performances. He's been in the top 16 in points in all, pretty much all the 15 races. The worst I think he's been is about 17th. Or 18 even points this year. And Front Row Motorsports has been taking major steps forward this year. As, of course, Michael McDowell is one of the veterans of the sport. He's been there long enough to where he's starting to form a lot better. Michael McDowell has never really been a fantastic organization throughout his career. He was a development driver for Michael Walter Bracing, which he didn't do very well. Remember Michael Walter Bracing when he got that organization? That team was really, really bad in 2007, 2008. And then he, 2009, he started getting good. But he was let go around the time because he wasn't forming as good as he could have. That being said, Michael McDowell's absolutely had a great gear career, and I think that he definitely deserves to come back next year to Front Row Motorsports in the 22 season. Now, if there were opportunities to rise for other organizations, maybe like Team Penske, which has opened up, 
and maybe like Wood Brothers open up. Maybe he could take those opportunities to go over there. But I really think that Michael Medell is going to come back to Ferrara Motorsports next year. He's not going to be using his Daytona 500 win or how good he's been performing this year. Basically, to keep him there, he says that he's just really, really happy where he's at right now. So I think Michael Medell is going to return to Ferrara Motorsports next year. And I think that he definitely deserves to come back there, especially with how good of uh, the performances he's had this year. I think he definitely deserves to, to come back and race at Ferrara Motorsports here in 2022. And now we're going to jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're going to talk about the next-gen test that has been taking place today. Today, NASCAR next-gen is basically testing at Charlotte Motor Speedway, and they're doing a wheel force test there. A lot of people are basically commenting saying, why is the car really sounding slow? Well, remember, the car is sounding slow because they're doing a wheel force test, therefore they're not going to be going as fast as a normal test. Today, Kurt Busch is going to be testing the Chevys. Drew Herring's been testing the Toyotas, and David Reagan has been testing the Ford. They've been using Drew Herring and David Reagan for the Toyotas and the Fords. Now they're using Kurt Busch for the Chevys. They're going to be using other drivers for the Chevys. Well, Kurt Busch is the guy that's going to be able to get feedback. Remember, this car is pretty much ready to go. They can do some updates, some changes. But they said this car is pretty much factory ready to go and that it's ready to be processed out and used next year in 2022, which is going to debut. Now, a lot of people were also asking in the comments as well of some of the posts asking, when are they going to be testing and pack racing and stuff? Basically, the plan right now is for them to test it at, I believe it's Daytona, in September. So we'll continue to watch what happens overall with this next-gen test. But yeah, really cool to see they're testing next-gen cars. Great to see that they've been testing because compared to the Gen 6 car, the next-gen car they've been testing way, way more. And it's great to see that they continue. And I do think that they're going to have a lot of tests going forward. I would expect the next test could not be told. Maybe I think there are going to be a lot of tests coming up here really, really soon. But the next one I know for sure is probably going to be happening is up in September. We'll continue to see what happens. But really cool to see the next-gen test. NASCAR Next Gen Car is continuing to be tested, and it's great to see that overall. And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the next story of today's episode, as we're going to go ahead and talk about Campy World. As Campy World is going to be sponsoring the SRX here in 2021, calling it the Campy World SRX Series, they're going to become the entitled sponsor. Marcus Amonis has been doing a lot of big things, and there's been some teasers going around for the last week or two that the SRX was going to be partnering up with Camp World. The fact they've become the entitlement sponsor is really, really cool. A lot of y'all know Marcus Simonis. Marcus Simonis also sponsors the Truck Series and the NHRA Series as well. And uh, Marcus Simonis has been helping out smaller teams as well in NASCAR to help and sponsor. And, of course, it's not as it's, it's more cheaper to get sponsored by Marcus Simonis compared to other sponsors and other teams, which it kind of hurts the sponsorship market overall. But what Marcus Simonis has been doing is really, really incredible. And the fact that a massive, massive company by Camp World is going to be sponsored in the Asterix is really, really cool. I'm wondering if they're going to have something or title list that they've been having with other, like NASCAR, if they're going to start like doing incentives and stuff during these races and be getting out a certain amount of money. That's one thing I'm definitely wondering for sure. But this is a massive, massive deal that Camp World is coming in and sponsoring the Asterix. Congratulations to the Asterix and Tony Stewart and Ray Abraham and everyone involved in that in getting Camp World to sponsor the Asterix. And now we're going to go and jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're going to talk about Chase Briscoe. As Chase Briscoe is going to be raced in the ARCA West race at Sonoma Raceway later this week. This makes a lot of sense because Chase Briscoe has never raced at Sonoma Raceway, even his time in the ARCA series and the ARCA West series. I think that ARCA West series starts in the past, if I'm not mistaken. He never raced at Sonoma Raceway. And because there was no race last year in 2020, and plus he's a rookie in the Cup series and the Sydney series and the Truck series has never raced at Sonoma, he is basically going out there to learn the track and get experience. Makes a lot of sense. And I'll be honest with you, some of these other drivers that are making their first starts in the Cup series, I'm very, very surprised that they're not going out there and running and attempting to get experience. I understand a lot of people are not going to be happy that Chase Briscoe is running, but I think, especially if you've never been to the track, I have no problem with that. He's also going to be working with the same team he worked in Argo with the Chad Bryant Racing Organization. So I think that definitely has a shot of contending for the victory against a lot of these other drivers, considering the Argo West Series and East Series doesn't have as much development and has as much talent as he used to in the past. So there is talent in that field. There's not much development and talent in that group right now. There's a lot of things that need to be working on the Arc West. I think this is a great opportunity for Chase Briscoe, and I think this will be a great learning experience for him overall. And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the next story of today's episode as we are talking about Timothy Peters. As Timothy Peters has mutually agreed to part ways with the Rackley WAR organization, which is the Rackley Willie Allen Racing Organization. Now, it is anticipated that Josh Berry is going to drive Texas, Nashville, and Pocono later this year. It has not been a great year for the Rackley WAR organization. Their performances have absolutely been really, really bad. I'm wondering if it's because Willie Allen 
is basically trying to is basically been focusing on the lay model programs. That's what I'm really, really wondering right now is one of the reasons why Timothy Peters has been struggling overall. But it's definitely brilliant fortune because Timothy Peters is a very, very solid driver. And the fact that he's not going to have an opportunity to rate at least race right now going with them anymore is really, really unfortunate. But it's also a great opportunity for Josh Berry as well. Josh Berry has been doing a lot with a little. He's been doing a lot of good things to Junior Motorsports. He does have a win for Junior Motorsports at Marzel. He's also going to be racing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series race at Mid Ohio is he's not going to be racing for Junior Motorsports in the A car because Miguel Pluto is going to be driving an eight. And we also know that he will be now running three more races in the truck series. I think Josh Berry has a very good shot of running very well in these cars. I think Josh Berry can definitely at least get these cars and trucks in the top 25. And I think he'd be very, very consistent with these trucks. I think that should be the goal overall for Josh Berry. But I hope Timothy Vaders really gets an opportunity to race with another organization going forward. Uh, maybe a team like maybe GMS with the 24 car, since there's a lot of races that are unknown for that car. Maybe some other teams that may be open to arrive very, very soon. But I really want Tim Timothy Peters to really have an opportunity to continue racing down the line. I don't know if it's – I can't really blame Timothy Peters because Rackley WI kind of funded at the last minute. Remember, they really announced this team – back in uh, January, unfortunately. So it really came at the last minute, similar to 2311 Racing. They didn't get their stuff really to the last minute. So I'm, I'm hoping that Timothy Peters gets another opportunity to race at another organization. It's definitely really, really unfortunate to see this, and hopefully he will get another opportunity going forward here very, very soon. It is really unfortunate to see this. And now we're going to go and jump up to the next story of today's episode as we are talking about the COVID-19 protocols at racetracks. NASCAR is starting at Texas Motor Speedway next week is going to be lessening the protocols in regards to COVID-19 when it comes to infield access. According to Bob Pockers, he says beginning next week at Texas, NASCAR garage operations will be more resemble pre-pandemic norms. We'll still have limited access as far as guests, but no health screenings. Spotters now allowed inside garage and pre-race activities will be more like they were pre-pandemic. This is really, really good news. NASCAR has been very, very quickly, especially in the last month or two, as COVID-19 vaccines have gone, NASCAR has been more and more becoming like they were in the pre-pandemic. And they're one of the fastest sports to get everything back to normal. Many, many racetracks have full fans back at the races. You got not Sonoma, but the next week after that text for the all race, you're going to have full capacity. You just had full capacity for the Charlotte weekend. You also had a lot of other races coming up, like Pocono that's going to have full capacity, like Nashville that's going to have full capacity, like a couple of the playoff races that are going to have full capacity. And I think it's great to see this overall, that they're going to have full capacity at those racetracks. On top of that, you're going to have more people. Again, they're still going to have limited guests up, but no more health screenings because there have been health screenings pretty much since last year. And the fact there's going to be no more health screenings to get into infield access is really, really cool. Now, there have been some questions in regards to if they're going to be opening up the garages completely. NASCAR's goal to open the garages up completely, they want 70% of the entire industry that works in the industry to basically be fully vaccinated before NASCAR can really open up everything in that fact. But the fact that they've been slowly opening things up much, much quicker is really, really awesome to see. The fact no more health screenings is really, really good thing as well. And no more masks have to be required indoors. Indoors, you have to wear a mask, but outdoors, you no longer have to wear a mask is really, really great to see overall. Things are getting back to normal, folks. In a, no time, there's going to be everything back to normal. I would not be surprised here in the next couple months that all the COVID-19 protocols are gone and everything returns to normal. I think for sure everything will be back to normal 100% by the time we get to the playoffs. But I would not be surprised even before that, maybe during the Olympic break, everything's officially back to normal and things get back to normal. This is really, really good news overall, and I cannot wait to see the future. Hopefully things continue to get back to normal as we get progressed farther down into the season. And now we're going to go and jump on to the next story of today's episode as we are talking about Phoenix International Speedway. As it was announced by Julie Geis at Phoenix Raceway that Phoenix is going to be returning as the site of the NASCAR Championship weekend on November 4th to 6th in 2022. This track has hosted the championship weekend since 2000. They hosted for the first time last year, 2020, and they'll be hosting once again here in 2021. Last year, they hosted it for the Truck Series, Xfinity Series, and the Cup Series, where Chase Elliott, Sheldon Creed, and Austin Cinder won the championships. And for the second and third years in a row, they are going to be hosting the championship weekend. It makes a lot of sense, to be honest with you, that they are hosting the championship weekend once again, considering they basically it was one real most recent track to basically have renovations on there. So NASCAR is awarding that track with renovations, plus they were able to, unfortunately, they were not able to sell because of COVID-19, but this year they're expecting to sell out. Now, we've had a couple announcements in regards to the 2022 schedule overall, as we have the Daytona 500 weekend, which is going to be February 20th, which is going to be present to say, and we also know that Bristol Dirt is going to be coming back next. 
Dexter. They haven't announced a date for that in regards. I don't know when that's going to be, but they have announced that that will be also returning as well. So we have a few of the schedule announcements. I don't think it's going to be before long that a lot of racetracks are going to start announcing their plans for 2022 and if they're going to be on a schedule. Now, I would not be surprised by the time we get up to the Olympic break is when NASCAR is going to be like, okay, we're going to go ahead and decide to open everything up much quicker than it is. And I think this is also really cool to see that everything is slowly, that basically the schedule is slowly but surely coming out. I mean, NASCAR has been teasing what their plans are in regards to the schedule. They're talking maybe going to street course in 2022 in Chicago, as in a day or two, they're going to be racing at the Chicago street course and to basically test on iRacing. And if it goes very well, maybe NASCAR will decide to go there. NASCAR is also talking about expanding up into Pacific West for 2022 as well and expanding into other areas that they've never impacted, especially in other areas of North America. This is really, really good news overall. It, You know, Phoenix International Speedway, I think one thing that would, I don't hate Phoenix International Speedway being the championship race, to be perfectly honest with you, but I do think that there's other tracks that do deserve the championship race. One thing I would like to see after 2022 is what I'd like to see is that I would like to see NASCAR basically rotate the championship finale. Like for one year, go to Phoenix International Speedway, the next year go to like to Bristol or go to Homestead one year or go somewhere else to basically you know, broaden the horizons and go to different tracks every year. Similar to what they do for the Super Bowl, why not go to different basically racetracks every single year for the season finale? You can keep all the other races changed up if you want to and change the schedules up every year and have the season finale be somewhere else. But I am happy that Phoenix is getting the opportunity to get it back again. And hopefully the racing next year at Phoenix Josh Speedway is overall going to be a lot better. But congratulations to Phoenix Raceway on getting the championship weekend once again in 2022. And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the final major story of today's episode as we are talking about Ben Rhodes. As Ben Rhodes is going to be making his NASCAR Cup Series debut this weekend at Sonoma, driving the number 77 for Spire Motorsports. Ben Rhodes currently drives, I believe it's the number 99 for Thor Sport Racing in the NASCAR Truck Series, where so far in 2020 when he scored two victories at both Daytona races earlier this year. And he's been one of the most consistent drivers so far to start off the year and has been one of John Hernandez's biggest competitors so far throughout the year. Ben Rose has definitely improved over the years. He does have some racing races in cars and outside of trucks. He raced in Xfinity Series, I believe, in 2014 and 2015 for Junior Motorsports, but that his success over there was not really lenient. But he, in 2016, went back down to the truck series and has been running for Thor Sports since then. Did not win a race in 2016. In 2017, he scored a victory at, at Vegas in the playoffs. In 2018, he was able to win at Kentucky. 2019, I don't remember exactly where I went. I think he won a race in 2019. In 2020, he won, I believe it was, in Darlington and was kind of struggling at the in the playoffs and had some feuds between drivers like Christian Eckes and Todd Gillen and Chandler Smith, among others, in that championship as well. And then this year so far, he scored two victories, and he's been very, very solid. Ben Rose is a much better driver in 2021 to where he was a few years ago. I've had issues with Ben Rose in the past, especially with his driving style, but I think that over the years, he's definitely gotten better as a race car driver, and I think that this is a very, very awesome opportunity overall for Ben Rose. I am a little surprised on a couple things. One, he is a Toyota driver driving the number 99 for them, and he's basically been dri you know, driving for Toyota or Ford. He's never driven. Last time he raced for a Chevy was, like I said, for Junior Motorsports. But I think he's also a solid choice overall because he does want a road course this year at Daytona Road Course. And he was overall very, very fast at Circuit America. So I overall think that Ben Rose is going to have a shot of overall being competitive over there. So hopefully Ben Rose will do very, very well. But my expectations and goals overall for Ben Rose, the goal I have for him is for him to basically try to finish in the top 30 with the Spire Motorsports equipment. I know those are kind of low expectations for Ben Rose, but again, it's his first career start in the NASCAR Cup Series. And that 77 car generally runs around the 30th to 35th place pretty much a lot of the weekend. So I think the goal for Ben Rose is to try to finish as in the top 30, and I think that would be a really good finish trim overall. But I think this is a really good opportunity for Ben Rose, and hopefully he'll have a very good shot of competing this week. And congratulations, Ben Rose, on getting an opportunity to race in the Cup Series. I would have thought maybe like someone like Sheldon Creed or Zane Smith who drives in the Truck Series for GMS who has association with them, or maybe someone like Jeb Burton who drives the 10, the 10 car for college racing since they've had drivers like Justin Daly and Ross Chastain who've driven for college racing in the past who've gone over to S77 to drive for Spire. I'm a little shocked on Ben Rose, but I think this is a really good opportunity for him and great to see that Ben Rose is getting an opportunity to race in the Cup Series for the first time in his NASCAR career. So anyway, that is going to be for today's NASCAR news video. I want to thank you guys for watching. 
Please subscribe to the channel, turn notification on so you're notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Link description below for that, and comment your thoughts on today's video. What are your thoughts about Ben Rose making his NASCAR Cup Series debut? And how well do you think he will run there? Let me know in the comments below. And what are your thoughts about NASCAR, the championship race, taking place once again at Phoenix? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys next time for some more great, awesome NASCAR content. Take care, everybody.